What's going on people? That's right, next gen is here. I finally got my hands on the Xbox Series X, Microsoft's next gen console. Now this console is the most powerful gaming console there is right now with 12 teraflops of power. Today I'm gonna to be setting this up and giving you guys my first impressions of the Xbox Series X. Now before I get into the setup process, I wanna take a look at the actual hardware. Let's start with the controller. Looking at the controller, you'll see there's a redesigned gamepad. It's pretty much the same controller except for a few key differences. For one, I can feel the back. The grips are much more noticeable, much more sensitive. It also uses a USB-C charger. Big plus for that from Microsoft. There's a built-in share button and the D-pad has been redesigned. Now, I do have my original Xbox um, One X controller here with me. And you can see there are some slight differences. Key differences being the D-pad and the built-in share button. This is also slightly smaller. And of course, this uses micro USB for charging. Now I do have the plug and play kit installed in this. I'll probably transfer it over to this so I don't have to deal with the AA batteries, but I'm just showing you guys what comes in the box of the Xbox Series X. Now heading over to the console, this is where the real fun is. Again, this has 12 teraflops of compute power along with the AMD Zen 2 CPU, which is clocked at 3.8 gigahertz. This is actually pretty compact in person, but it's pretty solid. It has some weight to it, but it makes you feel like it's a premium device for being so solid. The Xbox Series X comes with one terabyte of NVMe SSD storage. It supports up to 8K resolution, which definitely future proofs you. And it supports 4K up to 120 Hertz. There are a few games that take advantage of that, for example, like Gears of War 5. First of all, you're going to need the cable that came in the box. Now, this cable is very important for the full potential of next gen. This is actually a ultra high speed HDMI cable. Basically, it's HDMI 2.1, which allows your console to output 120 frames per second at 4K. Now you will need a TV that supports this signal to get the full potential of this console. However, I may need to upgrade my TV in order to get that full 120 Hertz at 4K. I think my TV caps out at 60 Hertz at 4K. However, it'll still be a great gaming experience as to compare to the previous generation of consoles as the SSD alone cuts load time significantly and the G CPU and GPU will definitely increase the game's performance overall. That's enough about the specs. Let's dive into the startup process. So I've set all the cables up, got the console plugged in and I'm actually gonna start the console up for the first time. So let's hop into um let's hop into the loading process and see how quick this console can actually start um game gaming. We're in it already guys. We're actually loading Halo Master Chief Collection and I'm actually gonna see how long it takes to get into an end game. Wow, and that's it. We're gaming already guys. Amazing, next gen is here. This is amazing, guys. Where's Infinity? This is 
his rec name's Coral, but Infinity is definitely not here. Just a little bit more on my first impressions. The console is whisper quiet. As you can see, the blades are spinning and it's still pretty quiet. That's quite impressive if you ask me. I've played Halo for approximately one hour and the console never got loud in my experience. Again, this is still my first impressions on the console. I will be putting it through its paces and I'll give you guys a full review in the coming weeks. Be sure to subscribe and I'm going to be facing these two off, the Xbox One X versus the Xbox Series X. So we'll see how they stack up against each other. Again, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. Thanks for watching. Peace.